Hello and welcome. My name is Stephanie Mack. I am the Executive Director of the UB Law Alumni Association. I'm sure some of you are wondering where Eileen is. I just want to reassure everybody she is uh, well. She has transitioned to emeritus status, and I was appointed Executive Director in July. Uh, she couldn't be here today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Eileen couldn't make it today, but she wants me to send everybody her warmest regards. And I want to personally thank her for everything she has done to help me in my transition, along with Karen Kazmarski and Lisa Mueller. There is a dynamic team at the law school, and I am grateful to work with them every day. Welcome to the 2024 presentation of the Edwin F. Jekyll Award. I am so thrilled to be here today. We are honoring a legend among UB Law alumni, the Honorable Julio M. Fuentes. So all of us from Buffalo made it here, despite a lot of snow. Unfortunately, our programs for today's event did not make it, so I do not have those to provide to you today, but I plan on hopefully shipping them to you next week. Um, but thank you for being here. So happy everybody could make it. It is now my pleasure to introduce Christopher Whiteman, who will preside over today's ceremony. Christopher is a member of the class of 1999 and chair of the Dean's Advisory Council. Chris is a partner at PJT Partners, a global advisory focused investment bank. He works with publicly traded Fortune 100 companies, advising their management and boards with how to deal with activist shareholders, proxy voting, and corporate governance issues. Chris received the UB Law Distinguished Alumni Award for business achievements in 2019. He flew in from his home base in San Francisco to preside over today's ceremony and to help us celebrate our honoree, Judge Fuentes. Please join me in welcoming Chris to the podium. Thank you, Stephanie, and uh, welcome guests, colleagues, friends. It's great to see you all on a snowy day in uh, New York City, which is you know, nothing compared to what we go through in Buffalo, for those of us that follow the Bills <laughs> and go Bills. <laughs> so I'm thrilled to be here, and it is a privilege to preside over this ceremony for our wonderful honoree, Judge Julio M. Fuentes from the class of 1975. What an honor. Today we present Judge Fuentes with the 2024 Edwin F. Jekyll Award. And thank you to everyone for joining us here, braving the weather and making it here. I mean, this is a great turnout. Having done this lunch now for 12, 14 years, the turnout's fantastic. So thank you for coming out in the snow to do this. And as we go through the program today, I just wanna say everyone should continue eating, um, just as a uh, tactical note there. Um, but I'd like to start by introducing the head table, as well as, as well as a number of special guests and dignitaries with us today. This list demonstrates just how extraordinary today's honoree is. Immediately to my left is our honoree, the Honorable Julio M. Fuentes. He is the senior United States Circuit Court Judge for the, Uni the United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Next to the judge, is Interim Dean Todd Brown of the School of Law. Next to Dean Brown is Michael. <laughs> Next to Dean Brown is Michael Hecker, class of 2009 and a partner at Hodgson Ross and president of the UB Law Alumni Association. <laughs> and thank you for making the trip down from Buffalo. Two seats to my right is Jessica Ortiz of the class of 2005. Jessica is <laughs> Jessica is the Deputy Inspector General and Director of Investigations for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. She's also our keynote speaker today. We're, re we're going to be relying on your services this afternoon, so I hope it's all going well in the snow. <laughs> 
And seated next to Michael is Stephanie Mack, class of 2008, as you know, our executive director of the Alumni Association. And then at the table just in front of me here, we'd like to welcome some very special guests. Judge Fuentes' wife, Olma Fuentes. His wife and companion of 47 years, Judge? Yes. Did I get that right? From Panama. From Panama. Wow. You must be freezing. <laughs> uh, Suzanne McQuinsky is Judge Fuentes' judicial assistant of 10 years. <laughs> Suzanne described working with, the judge, with Judge Fuentes as the best 10 years of her life. And hopefully today is one of the best days of those 10 years, so. <laughs> and then we have a number of members from the judiciary joining us today, so I'm gonna read through those for you here. So we have the Honorable Lenora Foote Beavers here. Thank you for being here. The Honorable Judith Gish. The Honorable Marisol Rosero. The Honorable Cynthia M. Roof and the Honorable Javier E. Vargas. Round of applause for that too. Thank you all for being here today. And then if this next list doesn't tell you how deserving Judge Fuentes is of the Jekyll Award, I don't know what will. In the room with us are 16 of Judge Fuentes' past and present law clerks, including our keynote speaker, Jessica Ortiz. 16. And I'm gonna go through their names. Evan Austin, Stephen Fisher, Anthony Iannarelli, Matt Kaminer, Megan Nepka, Amanda LaSavage, Chloe Lewis, Andrew Lichtman, Courtney Morfitt, Eli Northrup, Patrick Renekainen, Ravi Satwala, Fabian Thambali, sorry if I got that one wrong, Cody Vensky, and Nicholas Winkley. All 16 are here today, thank you. What a testament to the impact you've had on the profession, on the, it, it's incredible. And to our law students joining us today, we have a number here from the law school in Buffalo. Alyssa Carbone, Alex Gilson Lazarev, Matthew O'Hara, and David Reinhardt. We welcome you to this inspiring event, learning of Judge Fuentes' legacy and seeing the possibilities ahead, I hope leaves an impact with you. And also joining us today are members of the Dean's Advisory Council, the Law Alumni Association, including several past presidents. Uh, thank you, Jeff Stravino, talked with you earlier, and uh, Judge Foot Beavers, and thank you also, uh, and the New York City Alumni Chapter uh, chairs are here, including uh, Patrick Renekainen and Daisy Tomaselli. Daisy, hi Daisy. Thank you so much to all of you for taking time to be with us on this Friday. And thank you also to our many patrons and sponsors. So, a little bit on the Edwin F. Jekyll Award. The Edwin F. Jekyll Award is the most significant recognition the law school and the Law Alumni Association can bestow. It is, has been presented annually since 1976 to an exceptional list of distinguished men and women, legends and trailblazers of our law school who have had an enormous impact on both the school, the university, and also the profession and our no local and national communities. The recipient of the award exemplifies the highest ideals of the law school and the Law Alumni Association. The first recipient of the award is, was Edwin F. Edwin F. Jekyll himself. He was national chairman of the Republican Party and served as Governor Thomas Dewey's campaign chair when Thomas Dewey ran for president. Following him, the most renowned judges, scholars, movers and shakers have been Jekyll Award recipients, and possibly our most worthy recipient yet, Judge Fuentes. Today we celebrate the Honorable Julio M. Fuentes as the 48th recipient of the Jekyll Award. And I can tell you, the response to Judge Fuentes receiving this award has been joy, excitement, universal approval. So just, just a really great honor. So thank you for, for that. 
He has, been, he has made a career and life-changing contributions to our students, paving a path for many of them to excel in our profession. He has created unprecedented opportunities for our students to intern and clerk in his chambers, and he opened doors and provided a welcoming space to learn and practice law. And what we all know can be a contentious and adverse pro profession, Judge Fuentes radiates acceptance, equality, and warmth. His relationships spanned well beyond the courtroom, and he has formed lifelong connections and friendships, as most of you in this room already know. Judge Fuentes' passion and spirit have touched the lives of so many, and he inspires us to pay it forward every day. And as we were preparing for this, uh, in preparing remarks and, and keynote speeches and all of that, there's a universal fondness and admiration that comes through for Judge Fuentes. The words described, and I quote each of these, humble, kind, gentle, generous, remarkable, and a truly wonderful human being. What an extraordinary and rare description, and how extraordinary and rare for us to find someone as beloved and treasured by so many. And as you can imagine, this is not Judge Fuentes' first recognition by the law school. He has previously been recognized with awards from the law school's Students of Color and the Buffalo Law Review. He has received the Distinguished Alumni Award for the Judiciary from the Law Alumni Association in 2002. He is a member of the Dean's Advisory Council and an advisor to the Dean, so thank you for that as the one who chairs that organization. And in 2019, Judge Fuentes received a SUNY, SUNY Honorary Doctor of Laws and delivered a brilliant speech at the commencements that is still remembered by many to this day. Judge Fuentes, thank you for your remarkable contributions, your unparalleled generosity, and your outstanding leadership. We are filled with gratitude to have you as part of our community, and we are happy to be here today celebrating your legacy. It is with great pride that we honor you as the 2024 recipient of the Edwin F. Jekyll Award. And now I would like to introduce Dr. Satish K. Tripathi, president of the University of Buffalo. President Tripathi is the 15th president of the university and widely respected around not just Western New York, but the global community. President Tripathi could not be here today, but he has recorded remarks for Judge Fuentes, which we will now share. Good afternoon, Judge Fuentes. On behalf of the entire University at Buffalo community, congratulations on receiving the 2024 Edwin F. Jekyll Award. You truly embody UB's highest ideals. As such, we're delighted to recognize your distinguished career with the Jekyll Award. Throughout your career, you have been a dedicated champion for access and opportunity in the law. You have earned the deep respect and admiration of your colleagues on the bench and the bar. And as you have risen in your profession, you have stayed closely connected to UB, giving back in meaningful ways. We're grateful to you for your mentoring of the next generation of lawyers. Your humility and leadership have inspired both our school of law and our broader scholarly community. In 2019, I had the privilege of conferring upon you as one of the UB's most distinguished alumni, a SUNY Honorary Doctorate Degree in Law. Although I regret that I cannot attend today's celebration, please accept my heartfelt best wishes to you as you receive the 2024 Jekyll Award. Congratulations. And thank you, President Tripathi, for those wonderful remarks by video. And now I would like to introduce our interim dean, Todd Brown. For those of you who, who have not met Todd yet, he was appointed interim dean of the law school in July 2022. A member of the faculty since 2009, he's previously served as vice dean for academic affairs for seven years, overseeing the law school's curriculum and leading the advancement of its academic programs. Dean Brown earned a JD from Columbia Law School and an LLM from Temple University. Before entering academia, he was a managing partner of a small business, and he practiced with the law firms of Wilmer Hale in Washington, D.C., and Jones Day in D.C. and Cleveland. Todd?
Thank you, Chris. Uh, good afternoon. Afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you uh, on this very special occasion, and I want to thank you all for joining us um, to celebrate uh, the uh, fine work that Judge Fuentes has done with the law school and with our graduates. Uh, while uh, President Tripathi was not able to be here today, I know he was very disappointed that he could not uh, attend, uh, but I would also like to uh, express my gratitude for his continuous support of the law school and the university's continued support for the law school and our students. Also, of course, thank you to our MC, Chris Whiteman, uh, uh, coming here to help us pay tribute to our esteemed honoree. Chris is, as many of you know, an extremely loyal graduate of the law school, which is evidenced by his steady guidance of the Dean's Advisory Council, and uh, perhaps more uh, immediately by his willingness to leave the sunny shores of California in January during a winter blast uh, to MC this event. Uh, thank you, Chris. I'd also like to say uh, thank you to Jessica Ortiz and our Law Alumni Association President Mike Hecker, as well as Chief Judge Michael Chigaris, who has uh, provided uh, video remarks. We are honored that you could all participate today. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not express a uh, special thanks to Stephanie Mack, our new Executive Director of the Law Alumni Association, and really the entire alumni team who are behind the scenes producers of this event and so many other events throughout the year. Uh, they do a wonderful job every single time and they make even me uh, look good most of the time. So, um, before we begin the award presentation, I would like to take just a few minutes to give you a brief update on the School of Law. This year has been a year of transition, but the law school remains in a great place. As interim dean, I've been working with our dedicated faculty and staff to continue to expand our programs and our focus on key areas, especially with respect to student success. A few highlights, uh, you know, just uh, we have hired, uh, added nine additions to our world-class faculty. We have a very impressive 1L class, uh, statistically the strongest entering class that we have ever had. Uh, we have our first cohort of JSD students uh, to uh, fill out our new doctoral program. We have ongoing construction. If you haven't been around the building for a while, well, it still is a brutalist building, but the inside is a lot nicer. Uh, we have added a new student office space, a, a beautiful new student wellness room. Uh, we also added a nursing space and a changing uh, bathroom uh, where people can actually go and change into suits if they need to. Imagine that. Um, we have continued, of course, our focus on bar readiness and career services throughout our new initiatives. And these include our summer bar prep program, a mini bar exam administered at the end of the first year, and new scholarships for commercial bar prep courses for students with financial need. Thanks in part to these efforts, our 2023 graduates passed the July bar at the highest rate we have seen in three decades. They outperformed the pass rate for all first time New York bar takers from ABA approved law schools nationwide and from ABA approved law schools in the state of New York. Uh, no pressure on our students who are in attendance here today. We are very proud of this progress and I personally am grateful to everyone at the law school who works hard to support our students including the members of our Career Services Office and our Advancement Office who are here with us today. We are proud of the accomplishments, but we know that we can still do better. And our people, the people that we have on our team today, are well aware of that and they are pushing to do better. If you haven't had the chance to speak with Mark Davies, who's here from our Career Services Office, or Karen Kazmarski, who of course is here from our advancement office, I know that they would be more than happy to chat with you after the program. Uh, that has been a big part of our success. In fact, our success generally is a product of the incredible levels of support that we receive from our alumni and friends. This level of support, if you talk to people at law schools across the nation, uh, you'll find that it is somewhat rare 
not every law school, in fact, many law schools do not have the kind of well-rounded support that Buffalo has enjoyed for a number of years. This, of course, includes uh, alumni and friends in the legal community who teach as adjuncts, who mentor our students, who coach trial teams, who help with job placement, who support scholarships and provide other critical financial support. And of course, we have many members who are very happy to remind me where I'm doing something wrong. Um, I appreciate that. Our law school has always had a strong partnership with our alumni, and I want to especially you know, really drive home thank you. Thank you to those who partner with us to facilitate our student success. Today, we recognize and celebrate one of those longstanding partnerships with the presentation of the Jekyll Award to Honorable Julio Fuentes, a graduate who has opened doors and expanded access for dozens of promising UB Law students and graduates. The Jekyll Award is the highest honor that the law school and the Law Alumni Association can bestow. It's presented each year to an individual to acknowledge the honor they bring to the legal profession and to our school. Judge Fuentes' extraordinary journey to the U.S. Court of Appeals embodies the spirit of this award. Born in Puerto Rico, he was raised by a single mother on what I'm told was a chicken farm in Ocean City, New Jersey. He served in the U.S. Army before earning his undergraduate degree from Southern Illinois University. He graduated from our law school in 1975 and subsequently earned two master's degrees from Rutgers and NYU. He entered private practice in Jersey City before launching his judicial career as a municipal judge in Newark. He then went on to the New Jersey Superior Court bench, where he served in various divisions, until his nomination to the U.S. Court of Appeals, where he's the first person of Hispanic descent to sit on the Third Circuit. <laughs> on the day of his Senate confirmation hearing, which by the way, uh, his nomination uh, was unanimously confirmed. Uh, Senator Torricelli of New Jersey joked that the judge should have gone to law school at Rutgers, <laughs> but he forgave him for, quote, this single lapse in judgment. <laughs> well, it certainly would be an understatement to say that Rutgers' loss was our gain. Judge Fuentes is our law school's highest ranking jurist, and we proudly celebrate his incredible accomplishments but today we really want to celebrate his many contributions to our law school that extend beyond a title, a position, to the person, and to the person who has a commitment and reflects that selfless commitment to providing pathways for others. In 2008, Judge Fuentes reached out to our Career Services Office, inviting UB Law students and new alumni to apply for summer internships and year-long clerkships with the Third Circuit. Now, some of you might remember that time frame. Uh, we were entering a little recession, a little minor blip, um, and jobs were not easy to come by, particularly clerkships with the second highest court in the nation. But the judge opened doors for UB Law graduates and graduates of many other schools. For those fortunate enough to learn from him, it was life-changing. We spoke with many of the judge's former clerks and interns before today's event, uh, many of whom are here, including Courtney Mor Morphin. Sorry, Courtney, I'm going to uh, break down a little bit of what you shared with us. I hope you don't mind. Um, I hope this was clear. Um, she calls the judge the most remarkable person she's ever met and also the most humble. Courtney tells us that during her internship, the judge and his staff would have lunched together every Friday in their chambers in Newark. She says she doesn't know if the judge realized what an honor it was for them. They discuss cases and legal issues, but also spend time getting to know one another. It was a highlight of their new legal careers. Stephen Fisher from the class of 2016, a former clerk who is also here today, recalls the judge's chambers as a great learning environment where you were not afraid to make mistakes, and where new clerks were supported and encouraged. He thanks the judge for his guidance and, quote, for providing a ladder for young lawyers from UB. Jennifer Pacella, class of 2008, clerk for the judge from 2012 to 2013. She is now an associate professor at Indiana University 
And though she was not able to join us here today, she credits Judge Fuentes for allowing her to break through the ivy-covered glass ceiling by offering her an opportunity usually reserved for graduates of Ivy League law schools. You'll be glad to know that although we have a long list of glowing comments for former UB clerks and interns, I will not read them all. While these are just a few, they clearly convey why we're here today, to honor Judge Fuentes and his genuine commitment to providing pathways for others. Thank you, Judge Fuentes, for the many ways you have, you have supported the law school and empowered our students and graduates. From your years of service on the Dean's Advisory Council to the countless hours you have invested in our students and new graduates, we are privileged to honor you today with our highest award and grateful for your partnership. Congratulations, Judge, and thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Dean Brown, for your inspiring words. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce Chief Judge Michael Chigaris. Chief Judge Chigaris has served as the Chief Judge of the United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit since 2020. He was appointed to the court by President George W. Bush in 2006. Chief Judge Chigaris was not able to be here today, but he did record a video, which we will now share. Good afternoon. I'm honored on behalf of the judges of the United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit to congratulate our brother, Julio Fuentes, on being presented the prestigious Edwin F. Jekyll Award, the highest award that the University at Buffalo School of Law can bestow. Judge Fuentes is a most worthy recipient of the award. Judge Fuentes has been a Third Circuit judge and our first Latino judge for about 23 years and has served this court with great distinction. He's contributed so much to our juris jurisprudence and is the embodiment of the court's tradition of collegiality. Before joining us, Judge Fuente served as a municipal judge in the city of Newark and as a superior court judge for 22 years. So it's not an overstatement to say that Judge Fuente has dedicated his career his professional life to the cause of justice. Judge Fuentes is a spectacular jurist. He has taken on some of the most important cases our court has faced. From the adequacy of warnings in FOSAMAX to the Johnson & Johnson tout case, to sports betting, to a case involving media giant Viacom and the privacy of children. But he treats every case before him equally like when he permitted a disabled prisoner to continue a lawsuit against an allegedly abusive prison, prison guard. He's a brilliant man and a leader on the bench, but he's much more than that. He's an elegant, kind, gentle, and friendly person who despite all of his many accomplishments and brilliance is totally lacking in pretension and self-importance. He's the consummate gentleman he is also brilliant, hardworking, and thoughtful. And he has generously mentored many UB students who his colleagues have had the honor to meet. All of his colleagues admire him greatly. I'd like to offer a few comments from my colleagues praising Judge Fuentes. They say he is a role model. He has contributed so much to the collegial culture and jurisprudence of the Third Circuit. He is one of the nicest people any of us has ever met. He's a great colleague and friend, a gracious colleague, a gentleman, and a gentle man. As you can tell, Judge Fuentes is held in the highest esteem by the judges on the United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Again, congratulations, Judge Fuentes, on the honor of, re of receiving the 2024 Edwin F. Jekyll Award today. We are all proud of you. Thank you, Chief Judge Chigaris, for those wonderful remarks. And I'm now delighted to introduce Jessica Ortiz, 
of our class of 2005. She's our keynote speaker today. Jessica is a perfect representation of the effect a person like Judge Fuentes can have. She's a former clerk of Judge Fuentes and has had her own remarkable career so far. As a litigation attorney at Weill Gottschall, an assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern Division, and now the Deputy Inspector General and Director of Investigations for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Like Judge Fuentes, Jessica pays it forward and sets a wonderful example for our students. She is a member of our Dean's Advisory Council and has been recognized by the Law School Students of Color. Most recently, she was recognized by the Buffalo Law Review. Jessica and Judge Fuentes continue to be great friends to this day, and we are so pleased to have you today as our keynote speaker. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, my kids didn't have school uh, today because there was snow, and I thought it was an opportune time to tell them about my time in Buffalo. And I've decided I'm sending them to someone in Buffalo for a year so that they learn what real snow is. Um, so the last time I was in Manhattan with Judge Fuentes was in 2000, late 2007, 2008. And um, the occasion was the annual clerk reunion. And so for the clerks that are here, you remember we all had a different job um, based on which office you sat in, in, in Judge Fuentes' chambers. One of them was to plan the clerk uh, reunion. One of my co-clerks, who shall remain unnamed, decided that we were gonna be the class to pioneer and make our, uh, have our reunion in Manhattan. So we visited locations and we settled on a place and on a Thursday evening, we had our clerkship reunion. Needless to say, there was about two hours worth of traffic trying to get from New Jersey into Manhattan. And we walked in and we stumbled upon or found ourselves in a, a dimly lit restaurant with a DJ playing loud music and eating in a cramped room. After that, the judge made a rule. The clerk reunion would always be held in New Jersey. Um, so judge, we are in a much nicer room today um, and uh, it is a treat for us to be here to honor you today. And I am humbled um, and honored to be here uh, speaking about you. Uh, you've heard so much about the judge from other people and some of it bears repeating um, because we can't say it enough. And I had to think long and hard about what I could say to do justice to the amazing career that Judge Fuentes has had. Um, I knew a lot about the judge's life and his career. Um, I've been amazed by his story. His story is one um, that is very similar. It's similar to my parents who came from Puerto Rico um, to the United States as young <laughs> children um, to give their families a better life. And despite thinking that I knew a lot about the judge, I, I did learn some things. So you've heard that he was born in, in Umacao, Puerto Rico. Um, he moved to the Bronx with his family. He then moved to New Jersey and he graduated from Tom Rivers High School. Uh, he did earn his bachelor's degree um, from Southern Illinois University. But his time there, uh, as you may know, or was briefly alluded to, was interrupted by um, some time with the United States Armory, uh, Army, excuse me. And I, I was surprised. I learned that he uh, completed Airborne Ranger and Officer Candidate School uh, in Fort Benning, Georgia, which I didn't know. Um, he served with the 8th Special Forces Group in Panama, where he met his wife. Um, and he went on to earn a number of degrees. And then this fact jumped out at me. He, in 2006, he was inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And I was... <laughs> I was shocked. He wrestled in high school, but I had no idea, Judge, that you were in the Wrestling Hall of Fame, and I wanted to share that today. Um, so really, a man of many, many talents is who we honor today. Um, 
I, I do want to pause and, and, and repeat a little bit about what has been said about his career. He was a lawyer in private practice and then worked as a judge in Newark Municipal Court and then in New Jersey Superior Court. Um, and we've gotten to know uh, some of his state court clerks because Judge Fuentes has always um, included them, uh, even though he, he went on to the federal bench later. Um, and so he loved doing trials. Um, he, he always uh, regaled us with stories of his time in trial court. And although he has been uh, a long member of the Court of Appeals, um, he loves to do a trial, to read a trial transcript, uh, and remembers his, his days as both a trial lawyer and a trial uh, judge fondly. And in this world that we live in today and in this country, I, as I was writing my remarks, I marveled at the fact that in 2000, um, he was, he was confirmed unanimously, 93 to zero, which again really speaks to um, the experience and the character that he brought to the bench. And he broke a huge barrier. He, he became the first Hispanic judge on the Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Um, and I can't understate the importance of that to so many people, to the Latino community, um, because it really, it really did send a message. Judge Fuentes has offered, authored a number of judicial opinions that have helped mold our country's body of law. He's been on panels that have set out law on issues touching every area imaginable, criminal law, constitutional law, corporate governance and business matters, immigration law. He even had the chance to opine on Janet Jackson's Super Bowl wardrobe malfunction. That was perhaps the biggest case um, my year as a clerk with Judge Fuentes. And I could extol Judge Fuentes' contributions to our country's jurisprudence for hours, but I'll leave that to you as you read his opinions. Um, what I might have a bit more insight on that I'd like to share today about Judge Fuentes is what many of us came to know as his law clerks. I remember wanting to do a clerkship and I didn't have much luck when I was a 3L in Buffalo applying. So I ended up going to a law firm in New York, and about a year after graduating, um, Career Services helpfully put me in touch with Judge Fuentes, and, and he was gracious with his time, and he talked with me on the phone about what I could do to get a federal clerkship. Needless to say, I followed all of his advice, as I do to this day, and a year later, he hired me. But Judge Fuentes taking the time to talk to another UB graduate is demonstrative of his character and his commitment to mentoring new lawyers, especially Buffalo lawyers. I didn't come up with an exact number, but I think it's dozens of lawyers have had the pleasure of serving as his clerk. We are a bit like a family, as I mentioned before. Some of us are like distant cousins who have never met. I'd like to take a moment to ask all of the judges' clerks who are here to please stand and be recognized. I know there are many more judges who wish they could be here and who celebrate you and your accomplishments. <clears throat> Judge Fuentes' clerks have gone on to amazing careers as prosecutors, defense lawyers, professors, other federal judges. Our impact in the world, our contributions to the legal field are undoubtedly a product of Judge Fuentes' mentoring. I know I speak on behalf of all the clerks when I say clerking for Judge Fuentes was one of the highlights of my career. I remember my interview with Judge Fuentes. I was so nervous. I don't think I had ever been into a federal courthouse at that point, much less had I ever had the privilege of sitting one-on-one -on -one with a United States Court of Appeals judge. He greeted me as he always greets us, with a warm smile, and welcomed me into his office. He asked hard but insightful questions in his usual calm demeanor with a smile. 
never letting on to me that some of my answers were probably very off base. He asked hard questions about the Supreme Court, which justice was my favorite and why. He asked about an opinion to tell, he asked me to tell him about an opinion that I believed was the most important in the country's history. But he also asked questions that showed he was interested in who I was as a person. He asked why I went to law school, what my career goals were, and about my family. When I left the interview, I hoped I would get the job, but in that moment, I felt lucky to have had that time with him and to simply talk to him. That never changed. Once I became a clerk, Judge Fuentes was always quiet, but easy to talk to. He allowed his clerks the ability to decide what cases they wanted to work on based on their interest. And before he would talk to us about the cases, he left us to read the briefs, research the, the law, and develop our own views on the case. We'd then get together with him, and you knew that when you walked into his office, you better be ready and what you were up for. He had read all the briefs. He read your bench memo. He talked about the cases, and dissected the arguments that demonstrated his mastery of the law and the facts. And even if you got it wrong, which I did, just like his interview. He never told you that directly, but he gently guided you in the right direction. What mattered most to Judge Fuentes was getting to the right results. This was always done within the four corners of the law, but Judge Fuentes never forgot or lost focus of the fact that his decisions impacted people's lives. As many of you know, once a matter rises to the U.S. Court of Appeals, for many litigants, this is the last chance. Whether it's a criminal defendant's appeal, an appeal of a Social Security denial, or the appeal of a Board of Immigration decision, Judge Fuentes took great care with each case, knowing that the litigant had likely reached the end of their appeals. It also didn't matter to him that the litigants often didn't appear in court. He read the record carefully and brought life to each case. Judge Fuentes taught us that the briefs and appendix were not just the paper they are written on, but they are a complicated living set of facts. Each time he walked into oral argument, Judge Fuentes also taught us about the importance of civility in the practice of law. His reputation on the bench, you've heard it, was what we all knew. He asked probing questions, and he always made sure that he asked one of the questions that his clerks had given him, I think, to make us feel smart. <laughs> he was polite to the lawyers. He never cut them off or, wrote, or raised his voice. And he gently rephrased his questions when they didn't answer the question he asked. He is the consummate jurist. After arguments, we always anxiously waited for the judge to return from his conferences to share with us the outcome of the cases and what opinions we would pen. Now, some of you know there are precedential and non-precedential opinions in the Third Circuit. According to the court's website and rules, an opinion is designated as precedential when it has precedential or institutional value. I'm not judging the Third Circuit for defining the word with the word, but that's okay. Opinions that appear to have value only to the trial court or the parties is designated as not precedential. After the conferences, he'd tell us which opinions were gonna be precedential and which were gonna be non-precedential. The precedential ones were far and few between. Those were lengthy and often went through extensive analysis of the court's previous jurisprudence and how the opinion would change the landscape. The judge spent hours to go over the language of each opinion with us, asking for input from each clerk, sharing versions repeatedly to make sure we got it right before it went to the other judges for comment. But what I recall vividly was that he was just as attuned to and focused on the non-precedential cases. He gave them the same care and review because again, he knew that the litigant who would forever live with the court's decision would read it and would want to know that the court took care with their matter. I hope by now I've given you a glimpse of who Judge Fuentes is beyond his legal work. 
Judge Fuentes cared about his clerks and what they did after the clerkship. I remember him summoning me into his chambers and asking me what my plans were for after my clerkship. I had not given it much thought, and in the hot seat I said, well, Judge, I went to law school because I wanted to be in court. Without missing a beat, he succinctly told me I had two choices, be a criminal defense lawyer or be a federal prosecutor. He reached out to some former clerks and contacts and asked them to talk to me about what their life was like. And six months later, I accepted a job as an AUSA in Manhattan. That would not have happened but for Judge Fuentes. He cared about each of us and the impact and what we would do with our lives. But it didn't end there. Judge Fuentes is also the judge who always remembered his clerk's birthdays, dropping them a note years after their clerkship to say happy birthday. Just a couple months ago, we gathered again, both his state court and federal court clerks for our annual reunion. Yes, it was in New Jersey. He acknowledged each and every clerk that was there. Each year when he picked his new set of clerks, he'd ask the current clerks, whether we thought the four that he picked would work well together. It mattered to him that his chambers was collegial. And because of that, there are now many foursomes who gather and reminisce about their year clerking for the judge and sharing in life celebrations from marriages and children to the loss of loved ones. And speaking of family, I can't end today without recognizing his amazing family, who his clerks have come to know, and who the judge has shared with us. His wife, Oma, who's here today, his amazing daughters and grandkids. Thank you for always sharing Judge Fuentes with us. and We are extremely grateful to you. Judge Fuentes, you've had an amazing career and deserve all the accolades you have received and that you will continue to receive. And I hope that in this next chapter, you get to travel all around the world as you want to. But I want you to know that among your greatest contributions to the legal profession is your impact on countless lawyers. The lawyers who appeared before you, I know, are grateful to have had you on their panel or to have had you be the state court judge presiding over their client's matter. The lawyers who clerked and interned for you, who now teach New generations of lawyers learned how to practice law from you. You have molded us. You have left a legacy on this court and the profession. The legal profession is better and stronger for your, competition, for your contributions. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Jessica, for those incredibly inspiring remarks. And now to present the 2024 Edwin F. Jekyll Award to Judge Julio M. Fuentes, our Interim Dean Todd Brown, and Law Alumni Association President Michael Hecker. <clears throat> Thank you. On behalf of the University of Buffalo School of Law and the UB Law Alumni Association, I, and Interim Dean Scott Brown, Todd Brown, are honored and privileged to proudly present the 2024 Edwin F. Jekyll Award to the Honorable Julio M. Fuentes Class of 1975. The inscription on the award reads, in recognition of his significant contributions to his law school and the legal community, it is with great esteem and gratitude that we present the Honorable Julio M. Fuentes with the highest award the Law School and the Law Alumni Association can bestow. A dedicated advocate of the Law School and an emeritus member of the Dean's Advisory Council, he has mentored dozens of UB School of Law graduates and welcomed over 50 as summer interns. Nine UB Law graduates have served as one of his elbow clerks, the first Hispanic judge to sit on the Third Circuit, Judge Fuentes' extraordinary leadership, both on and off the bench, have earned him the respect and admiration of his colleagues in the judiciary and the bar. 
for his selfless dedication to upholding the integrity of the legal profession. With that, please join me in congratulating the Honorable Julio M. Fuentes, class of 1975. I'm asked to speak if I want to. <laughs> I have to think about it. <laughs> After all that I, I've heard here uh, today, it's really hard to, to say anything in addition, but there, there's a thing or two that I, I might want to say. Um, I might want to say that one of the best decisions that I have ever made was to meet this young lady in Panama where we got married. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we're still together. <laughs> it's something like 40 plus years. Um, and it's, uh, it's really been, been wonderful. Um, what else can I say? I've had opportunity to have some of the greatest, greatest uh, law interns and uh, helpers in the determining the correct positions to take in law that anyone could ever imagine uh, generally hiring many from Buffalo, University of Buffalo, and they have turned out to be great, great uh, assistants. Uh, but I do want to first thank the uh, thank very much the law school and the law alumni, alumni or alumni association for this great honor. This is uh, something that I did not expect, but uh, I certainly thank you. It's really a great honor. And, and it reminds me of the great times that I had at the State University of New York at Buffalo, the great teachers that we had, so many of them, so many that I, I respected. And uh, uh, I, I can't help thinking that I made one of the finest decisions I've ever made um, by going to the State University of New York at Buffalo. That's besides offering my wife, <laughs> asking her for her hand in marriage. Um, it is, it is really, uh, truly an honor uh, to be here accepting this award, and, and that's particularly here on the, uh, on the eve of, of my retirement after nearly 24 years of service, and, uh, and certainly I, I can't imagine a better way to cap off my career as a judge than celebrating with you and accepting an award from the school where it all began for me. That's the State University of New York at Buffalo. Um, I've always had the highest regard for the University of Buffalo um, and its mission of providing quality education um, while being, as I understand it, and I, I could be wrong, it's the only public law school in the state of New York. Only one. And, uh, That is what caused me to travel from New York City to Buffalo uh, during that period. But it's a, it, I always found it to be one of the fantastic law schools that I, anyone could apply to, just great. Great teachers uh, throughout my three years there. I really enjoyed it. And I think I, I learned a lot and I became what I, what I became because of the uh, education that I had at SUB. I can hardly believe uh, how fast the past 24 years on the bench have gone. It feels like uh, just yesterday I, I was a UB law student. Um, I have the fondest memories from, from my time in Buffalo, and UB Law School will always have a special place in my heart. Um, I don't know if I, remember, if, I, if I mentioned, but there was one individual there, Salvatore Martucci. I don't know if he's familiar with you, but 
he certainly is familiar with me because, you know, he ran a program called the Erie County Pre-Child Release Program, which had many of us as students uh, go to the cell blocks very, very early in the morning and interview uh, prisoners and get uh, background information from each of those prisoners. And then we would go to the cell block uh, and then we would... Um, uh, interview the prisoners and get as much detailed information from them as possible. And once we got that information, we would then go to the municipal court. I guess it's called the municipal court, but that was the court um, in, in Buffalo. And our job after getting the information from the prisoners and verifying the information is to stand up in the courtroom and make recommendations to the judge on the question of bail. And it was such an experience that I said, I hope I can do that too. I hope I can become a judge and provide that information. And as it happens, when we made those recommendations, the judge virtually always accepted the recommendations that we made. And that was because we verified the information and gave the, the judges their detailed information of why this person should either be held on bail or why this person should be released. And I always remember that because I always thought, as I think I mentioned, I, I wish I could do that. <laughs> and as it turned out, I, I did a little bit of that in my years going forward. Um, the uh, UB Law, has, I, I think, set me up for the, if you can call it that, the success that I've been fortunate enough to have and, and shaped me into uh, the jurist, the judge, I think, that, that I have become. Um, I, I think that my, my career probably might, not might, would have been different, I would say, if it were, were not for my time in Buffalo and learning from so many incredible people uh, at the University of Buffalo. Um, during my time on the bench, I've had the privilege of, of welcoming over 50 you know, uh, uh, University of Buffalo Law School students as summer interns and, and of having nine University of Buffalo uh, graduate students as law clerks. I've always made it a point to get somebody from Buffalo and I've been very lucky and I've had in many cases much more than one or two or five or ten uh, in the summer especially. Um, I, I think my, my job um, would uh, would have been much more difficult without the invaluable contributions of all my former clerks and law clerks. Together we shape the law and I, I believe collectively we always try to come out with the right decision. We looked at it time and time again and we, we want to be on the right side of things and I think, frankly, we always were. I've experienced firsthand how smart, hardworking and driven University of Buffalo uh, law school students are. Uh, very, very impressive. Uh, I, I enjoyed working with every single one of them. Um, and I, I am so proud of all my former interns and clerks who are making their marks in the legal world and helping many other people in the process. You have to help other people uh, who need legal assistance. And it's, it's so important, I believe, to ensure that the next generation of lawyers um, is well prepared for the future and well prepared to be leaders in that future. My hope is that the, uh, the interns and clerks that have passed through my, my chambers will continue to be uh, a resource to one another and to future generations of law students. I would encourage students and, and new lawyers to reach out to people in the community and make connections. I would encourage established attorneys to give back to their communities and to seek mentoring promising young lawyers, especially from a great law school like State University of New York at Buffalo, one of the finest. Now, and, and, and finally, I, I truly believe that I have seen firsthand that through hard work and community support, the lawyers from the University of Buffalo School of Law can accomplish anything they set their minds to accomplish. 
I know the uh, University of Buffalo law community is invested in each st student's success, and I am honored to have played a small role uh, in that community during my career. Meeting so many students and young lawyers was the highlight of my time on the bench. Um, I look forward to continuing to cheer for each and every one of you. I want to thank you again for this great honor. And I want to say just one final point. I want, I want to express my appreciation. Um, she's not going to be agreeing with me, but I, I, appreciation to my wife. <laughs> and and, uh, and my, my daughters also, who were very helpful and instrumental for their unwavering support concerning my judicial career. Um, and with that, I would say thank you so much for this great opportunity, and thank you, Dean, for your kind words. Thank you. Thank you all. So thank you, Judge Fuentes, for your inspiring remarks and the amazing example you set for all of us. And congratulations once again on the award and on your retirement. Uh, and thank you all for joining us. Um, one question, um, we, we're hoping to get all the clerks together for a photo with the judge, so if you can hang out for a few minutes after, appreciate that. Um, and thanks to everyone here for coming out on a chilly day to uh, celebrate with the judge. This brings our program to a close, and with that, go Bills. <laughs>